Hey folks, so tonight we're going to go ahead and knock out spindle control with Linux CNC. I went ahead and bought the C6 variable spindle speed control board from CNC for PC.com. I'm going to go ahead and uh, hook that up in this video. I've successfully been able to get it working and everything, so tonight I'm going to show you how I do that. Also, make sure to check out the link in the description. It's going to have a HAL file and a wiring diagram for this setup. Okay, so I'm kind of making this video after I've been playing around a lot with the different um, types of motor control and everything. And I actually, while I was working on this, managed to fry my board that everybody says to be careful with. And yeah, we did it by trying to make our own circuit to convert that PWM signal out of Linux CNC and make it a scaler for this mill. I'm not 100% sure how it happened. I'm really bummed that this board is gone, but like anything, I'm going to use it as an excuse to upgrade. So, you know, i got to tell the wife and everything that, hey, we need a bigger motor if we're going to put money into this thing, right? So, I'm looking on all the used sites, Craigslist and KSL, trying to find a, a treadmill that I can rip into. So, i got to lead on one. Hopefully, I'll get it tomorrow, and then we'll have a motor upgrade video. All right, so that right there is the CNC for PC.com C6 um, variable spindle speed control board, something to that effect. Um, the idea is that you can spit out um, stepper pulses, so they're going to vary in frequency instead of pulse width. And from there, this board's going to interpret those, those pulse widths and scale a 0 to 10 volt signal. So I didn't really research it too much what my mill was, was needing, and so that's one drawback is my mill goes from 0 to 12 volts, this only goes 0 to 10. So right, right there I know I'm going to need to amp it up to get the full power out of my mill. And so here I have it hooked up, I've got, uh, it's pretty simple, you've got one wire here, that's the um, stepper output, so this is pulses, the other one's ground. And then on the other side, I've just got positive and negative. This board takes a 12 volt DC signal, or DC input. So I've just got that run into a little um, rectifier wall board type thing. Okay, so right now, I've got my spindle set to 1000 RPM. Just ignore that, that's in millivolts. But this is the output on here. So everything's hooked up, and boom. As you can see, I'm getting like 13 millivolts, so 0 0.013 volts if you were to step up the range. So that is not enough to do anything. I can go ahead and, you know, keep increasing RPM. It stays right there. Um, I can stop the spindle, doesn't do anything. So, uh, spoiler alert, I've already been through this and figured out the issue but I just wanted you to see exactly what I've got. You know, I've got my, my DB25 breakout board, I've got a pin sending a pulse, and I've got it going into the board, i got no output. My next thought, and um, hold on, scratch this. Ignore everything you just saw about this fancy green multimeter. That's better. Alright, this is what I was working with when I was going through this troubleshooting process. This little craftsman thing, no frequency, no pulse width, nothing like that. So I got it on voltage, you just saw I have no voltage output, um, or very, very little. So the next thing I did was I said, okay, well what am I getting, am I even getting a voltage into the board? So I know it's a frequency, but I figured I would at least, you know, just probe the beginning. And as you can see, it's sitting at 0.14. So I turn the spindle back on, um, start cranking up the speed. So we're at like... This is 1600 RPM. You can see I got 0.2 volts now. So it, it changes. So at that point I kind of thought, okay, I might be getting a frequency out of here. It's hard to tell because it should be 0 to 5 volts, theoretically. Um, but this thing, without knowing or being able to check pulse widths or anything like that, didn't really help me. So 
So I actually played around with um, the Linux CNC HAL file and tried to figure it out, tried to get a good pulse width out of it, thinking that you know there was just something not connecting, but I figured since I was getting a voltage out that I probably was good to go, and I was getting some type of signal that just wasn't strong enough or, or whatever. So I played with that for like an entire night and it got frustrating. So I finally sat down and thought about it and figured how can I isolate some things that, you know, that could be okay or could be wrong. You know, there's way too many variables between the board and the computer and, and everything. So then I thought, well, if I could just measure the pulse width and frequency coming out of the computer and know that I'm getting a good, a good pulse, that would be a good start. I could at least isolate the computer out of that. So then, <laughs> Harbor Freight got me, you know. That, that multimeter, the green one, is a whopping like 40 bucks. Um, and it's got pulse width, it's got um, frequency, it's got all that good stuff. So went and bought that and I'll show you what I did next. All right, so the next thing that I decided to do was check for amperage. And so I plugged it in. Um, as you can see right now, I've got zero amps. So let's turn it down a little bit. Yeah, so as you can see, I've got like very little current. Um, 0.3 milliamps. I thought I had like one milliamp the first time I did this. But anyway, the point is, very, very little current is what I discovered with this multimeter. So I went back to um, the manual for this board, and it asked for 16 uh, milliamps. I'm at 0.3, so I'm at like nothing. Um, I read in my old electronics books and nerd books and figured, okay, a transistor is my answer. Okay, so the setup got a little bit messier. And it looks like I got my current leads on backwards because it's negative, but that's no big deal. You get the point. What I did here was I took the signal that was coming straight out of that board for the stepper pulse signal. And instead of going straight into the frequency board here, I ran it into this little tiny transistor. All it is, the number on it is 2N2222. So just a little transistor cost about a penny. Um, I just had some laying around in my electronics um, little gadget bin. So you run this signal, the signal wire coming out of the breakout board, into the middle pin which they call the base. And the, the purpose of that pin is to trigger the current to flow through, they call it a collector and an emitter. So the collector is the top part where I have, this is five volts just straight off of my power supply. And then the emitter would be the bottom one, and it's going into that C6 um, control board now. So, kind of makes sense when you think about it. Read up on transistors. And the idea is that um, you can control more, um, more current with a small signal. Uh, and there's different rules about it. It's not just a simple relay that's going to click a switch. It actually is current in the signal causing other current to flow. But so the, the main gist of it is this one little transistor caused or was able to allow another voltage source to toggle at the same exact frequency and output that this board now has one milliamps instead of instead of like 0.3. So now with that let's see what we've got on the uh, on the voltage and the output. So my trusty multimeter comes back. Let's throw it on the voltage. Right now it says spindles at 4300 RPM so that's almost max for me so I should have about 10 volts. Alright so the left one is current, the right one is voltage. Let's go 0 to 10 here. Well that's no bueno, I still have a 0. Alright the guy on the left is current, the one on the right is going, so current going in, current flowing into that guy. The one on the right is going to be voltage coming out that would end up going to your mill. So there you go, we got 2500 RPM and it says 7 volts. Now if I sit here and play with my mouse and I go, well, this is going down, you can see we're ticking down. 6 volts, 5 volts, or if I want to increase speed, 3 volts. Oh, the acceleration is set really slow, so you kind of got to let it, let it go. We have five, six, and we let's go all the way up to 4,500, and it should about max it out. This is 3,700. 10, 
So it looks like my scale might be a little bit off because it's already maxed out at 3800. But you get the idea, this board works as long as you've got a strong enough input signal. That's what I was running into and it took me like a day or two to figure out. And I guess one thing about amperage to be said is that it, this multimeter is most likely averaging the current that's being passed through that. So a lower pulse width or a lower, it's going to be a lower amount of current that's going over time. So that's why that number is most likely decreasing. All right, so now I think I'll just kind of show you the back of my mill, show you where you need to be plugging into, at least for my board. Disclaimer, these things have a lot of different boards in them, but I'll show you what I have and what pins I need to tap into. All right, guys, so without this being on, if you find, it's hard to see, these three little spots for wires there, there's pin one, pin two, pin three, P1, P2, P3, According to what I've been able to find with my multimeter and with um, you know online and everything, P1, that's a 12 volt hot. Pin 3, that's all the way to the left, is ground. Pin 2 is your wiper on your um, potentiometer. So basically pin 2 is going to be where you plug that 0 to 12 volt signal. And pin 3 is going to be the ground. And so you just want to tape off you know the wires you disconnect plug your new wires from that whichever board um, you decide to use plug them into there and you should be good to go all right so that's it for this week make sure to tune in next week because i'm about 99 percent of the way to having the pulse width modulation and linux cnc working with our mills so i'll have that going next week i guarantee it see ya